two weeks ago, a pastor spoke and we got rid of some things. So there's maybe some things in our lives that are yeah. getting in the way of our worship expressions to God. Wrote them down on paper. We went and did a shredder, get rid of those. Then I'm reading all about worship again and, and studying and going to prepare for last week's message. And Dad said, hey, Mom's going to speak. I said, awesome, great. Because there's just like so much we excited around in our mission of communities. We're talking about worship, and we're like, okay, yeah, but how, you know, why do I worship? Do I worship because of who he is? Because you know, because uh, he's done things for me, or do I worship just because, man, I, I want to be obedient to God, and I know that He's right. He's right. He's the one. He's what it's all about. Like I can't turn to any other thing. I can't worship any because I know He's right, and I worship Him because of obedience. That of man, He's just the one that I need to worship. How do I know what I'm worshiping? I was talking about that in, in my mind. And I, I say, what, whenever or whoever my life rises or falls upon that thing, I'm, I'm worshiping. In Romans chapter 1, one of my favorite passages that I've maybe mentioned it pretty often, but in Romans chapter 1, verse uh, 23, it says this, that the people were guilty of this one thing, of, of wrong worship. That they exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like a mortal human being. Birds and animals and reptiles. The worship is exalting something above all other things. They exchanged the glory of a mortal God. They, they exchanged the honor and the respect that is due and deserved for God, the immortal being, the one who spoke all things into existence. They exchanged that glory, and they gave it to others. They gave it to human beings. They gave it to reptiles. They gave it to birds and animals and, and all these different things. And I could say, okay, maybe in, in modern, how would I modernize this to maybe those of us in this room aren't guilty of, of worshiping or exalting the uh, attributes of lizards or animals or, or reptiles in this room. But maybe there's um, things that work and things in our family and things of life that we exalt or give honor to, give the glory that is deserved our God, the one who is immortal, who is forever. Worship is exalting, it, giving honor, respect, putting God above everything else in life. There's things in my, in my life and sometimes people would say, hey, these are your my, my guilty pleasure, the things that I find pleasure in. And sometimes I find that I'd rather go to these, these things, whether it be, hey, going on a great fishing trip, which I think is awesome and is totally a, an opportunity to worship God and all of his creation. Uh, but but there's, there's things that I place above who God is, that I place... Um, the attributes that are from God, the peace that He comes, uh, that He gives, the, the glory that He, has, the mercy that He shows, and I and I look to other things to receive that, to take that place in my life. To, I, I look at these things as my provider and my provision outside of looking to God, the immortal one, the one who is all these things to me. I worship. Acknowledging worship is acknowledging that He. God, Jesus, is worthy of our affection, our adoration, and all of our attention. Yes, that He receives our affection, all of our love, and all of our pleasure is wrapped up in who He is. And we have to know who He is and what He's done in our life. That affection, it grows. It, 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 it goes to the moments of, man, I can't contain myself, but talk about how amazing He is, how, how great He's made my life, how freeing he's been, the peace that comes, the, the joy that is overwhelming in my life, man, I, I can't help but be affectionate toward them. My adoration, who am I in awe of, what am I in awe of in my life, I, or do I stand in awe of the living God who, who has created all things, who is all things, who, who heals, who answers prayers, am I in awe of his great wonder? That's what I love and enjoy about being out there when I'm fishing. It's not only the amazing sport and awesome moments where you actually get a fish on your line and you get to get it in the boat, but just being out on the lake and to see the fingerprint of God all over it, it's, it's awe-inspiring. Does God, is He receiving our adoration or our attention? I used to, used to say, you know, people could 
count up uh, like if you count up your time, like you count up a checkbook and see you know where you spent the most of your time, your most of your attention. Where have you put the most detail of your life into? Has he received your attention? When he does, I believe he's worthy of it. It becomes worship. Worship, if we look at, Pastor Tina said last week that uh, when we look at different definitions, but uh, worship is the quality of being worthy. Worship, the quality of being worthy. And wow, God, you are worthy of all of my affection, all of my attention, all of my faith. Jesus, you're worth it. It's worth it to set aside time and to be with you. This week, Rachel and I were practicing that with it. Uh, you know, our nightly routine uh, is turning on our episode we were into right now, Master Chef and America's Got Talent. Those are the two shows that we like to. And so in the evening, we said, you know, that's that's how we unwind. We just we just sit down and we relax and and we just said, you know what? It was, I think it was Tuesday night. We said, man, we're let's turn off the episode. Why don't we just read the word together? I mean, and I said, he's worthy of our attention. He, yes. He's he's worth it. No, I really love Master Chef. I'm like getting into this competition. I love cooking because you know, this this family dinner. I'm excited about this, right? But no, I mean, he's worthy of my time. And every time I find that I spend time with him, not that I spend time with him to get the blessings and the goodness that come when we spend, but when I spend time with him, all of a sudden, then I receive from him. I I am with him. He, he's part of me. He, he's with me. His presence overwhelms him. It, it, it's like this automatic thing. Not that I worship him in a, in a moment I give to him or I sing a song out loud or, or I shout really loud and crazy. I don't do that to, to get it, but when I when I do it, all of a sudden, now I, I get this experience with him. I get to experience who he is. And it's worth it. It's worth it. it. It's worth it to walk around on a Saturday afternoon and, and have three different uh, engagements that I gotta go to, and, and some of those Saturdays I, I have to go to work after. I mean, it's worth it to go out there and spend my time because, man, when I do, I I, I am with them. Not only was it that we were walking and there was some ladies that came out of their apartments, they were talking to a particular group of people that were walking with us yesterday praying, and I said, man, as you guys were walking, I knew there was Christians coming down the road. Like, I had to get out of my bed. She ran out of her building to go meet these, uh, whoever these people were down here walking because there was a different presence about you. you know, it's not just that outside they get to experience it. I mean, when I worship, when I put him first, when I adore him and give him the attention he deserves, I experience him. C.S. Lewis was talking a little bit about worship. I love uh, C.S. Lewis' books. He's a great author. He says that the most obvious fact about worship, whether of God or anything else, that all enjoyment spontaneously overflows into praise. I think about it. You ever been around two, two newlyweds or two, two lovers right there? Oh, I mean, you don't have to stop them from, from telling them praises of, of the, the spouse that they're married to or, or the, the one that they're in love. I mean, they, they just talk about the great things. They're overfilled. It, it overwhelms of their attention, their affection, their adoration that they've given. Right? Uh, or you ever, I don't know, avoid the road, maybe you're a reader and you really enjoy reading books. You get, you get a good book, and guess what? You heard I was sharing. Hey, did you read this good book? It was like amazing. The plot line, the story, it was amazing. And they just talk about it. You get in a book club, you know. And the, I'm not, I want to go to a book club. Like, those that go to the book clubs, I mean, they, they're passionate about it. They, wow, this is taking a place. Walkers, those who are walking, I mean, talking about exercise and different things. I mean, it just overflows from them. Parenting, talking about how awesome your kids are. I used to remember as a as a kid uh, hearing dad talk about us to different people, and or people talk and tell us, "Hey, your dad loves you guys. He talks all about you guys. It's amazing." You know, there's 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 a there's an overflow of of expression that comes when we are in worship. We delight to praise. C.S. Lewis went on to say, "We delight to praise because praise is not merely." the expression, but it completes the enjoyment. Mm -hmm. right? Whether it be something that we're, we're into, and hey, man, this is taking uh, my time, whether it be parenting, whether it be a hobby, whether it be whatever it is, right? There's an enjoyment, that I, and, and it's complete when I have to convince somebody else that this is a really awesome thing to do. I talk about how awesome it is. 
in, in God, when we delight, our, our delight and our praise, it, it is not merely just an expression of what He's done, and it, it's, it, it completes the enjoyment. When I get to sing to Him, when I get to give, when I get to take my time and, and give to Him, it completes that sense of, wow, God, you, you are amazing. You are worth it. Yes. Whether it be singing, we get in, I was, uh, at the end of the message, I have a point, but anyway, when, we, when, when we're singing, when we're clapping, and when we're shouting, if we're kneeling, or bowing, or why we raise our hands, or why do we express these things in worship, why do I give out of the, my possessions, or why do I give of my time, all of it is an act of worship, it's because it is completing the enjoyment of being with God. Yeah. Yeah, that's and that's what worship is all about. We're bringing honor and glory to God. In our worship, we point to Him as being above every situation, as being above everything, as being greater, as being better than life. Worship is ex an expression of God's worth to us. John chapter 12 is a great story. We'll turn there this morning and read this, this moment of worship, this moment of expression to the Lord of how worth, worthy He is. And I love this contrast because it's a that developed in the story because it's something that I experienced in my life. The contrast between, hey, yeah, you're worthy, and then and there's others like, oh, is it is it too much? Is it what's going on? Then there's something better I could be doing with my time. Isn't there something better I could be doing with my time? Isn't there something better I could do with my voice? Or let's look at this in John chapter twelve. I'm going to read verse one through eight. Six days before Passover came to Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner. Hey, remember, Jesus likes to eat. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Verse 2. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume, she poured it over Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why isn't this perfume sold and money given to the poor? It was worth the year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As a keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put in it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she would save this perfume for the day of my burial. You have always have you will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. What an amazing moment of worship. An expression of how worthy Jesus was to receive from us. So we talk about singing songs, and, and that be a, a point of, of worship, but, but as, this, as the intro was saying, it, that worship is more than just an expression through song, it's more than just a, a clapping of the hands, it's more than just a shouting in, in, in celebration. Worship is an expression of how worth it Jesus is. And it comes in many different expressions. It can come with how we spend our time, how we spend our finances. And here we find Mary uh, taking this uh, nard, uh, this perfume that's worth a, a year's wages. And I think some outrageous, think about outrageous gifts that I've given in, in my life. Or you can think about outrageous gifts. And here all of a sudden she, she gives an outrageous gift. She pours an outrageous gift upon his feet. An expression to say, Jesus you are worth it. Yes. You're worth it for me to look undignified, to wipe your feet with my hands. God, you're worth it. When I get that kind of expression in my heart, when I get that kind of adoration, that kind of affection, that kind of attention to the Lord, I, it, it's a sign of how worthy He is. Yeah. sins that were forgiven in my life, the, the way that He created me, the way that He has provided for me. God, you, you're worth it. You're worth every The way that you've forgiven me and set me free from all of my past. God, you're worth it. Yes. Amen. 
I'll pour myself out on you. I'll get the most expensive. I'll, I'll spend my extra hour with you. I, I will do it because you're worthy. And when we begin to recognize that, our life becomes worship. It's not just a moment on Sunday morning. It's not uh, just a moment where I put on the CD player or the MP3 or, or the, the radio station where I can worship and, and sing through expression of, of song. But no, it, it becomes now every moment of my life, how am I expressing God's work? Yeah. That's when we have true worship. And in this exact moment here, Mary coming and anointing his feet and wiping his feet with her hair, we have this opposition view. Man, I have to, God, sometimes I'm, I, I'm guilty of this same, uh, this same reasoning that uh, Judas had. It would have been better if she would have sold this and we could have done more good with it. It would have been better if I didn't spend my time in, in this manner for Jesus, and I just rested. Andrew, you need some rest. Get, get some, and oh, I want to express myself to God. I want to express how worthy he is, worthy he is with my life. I want to give him every moment that I can. When we get this understanding, no cost is too great. What a waste, Judas said. Jesus, he, basically by saying that, he's saying, Jesus, you aren't worth it. Yeah. You know, there's a, a beautiful song, Alabaster Box. You guys have, have to uh, look at YouTube. If you haven't heard of YouTube, that, look it up on the internet. And Alabaster Box, it, it kind of is a po poet, poetic um, expression of this scene here. But you know, when we understand what we have or what we've been given in God, that it, it could never stop our expression to Him, our worship of Him. To really understand how much we've been given, how much He's done for us, sometimes we take, we make too big a deal about ourselves and it stops us from worship. Because we think, oh, in our daily lives, man, I've done this. I've, I've, We'll talk about this before. Our gifts and our talents, right? That sometimes uh, we, we take credit for the who actually they've been a gift from God, right? And then when I, I say, no, my job getting a box, a, a job at Curry the Box, I'm not working for Apple Chart, who's who's the owner, and I, I'm there. I'm working for God, it's, it, it, and it's not Apple Chart that pays my uh, check every two weeks that gets deposited into my. No, that's a that's something that God has provided for me. And sometimes we don't give him the, the credit that he deserves it. And they say, no, God, you're worth it. God, you're the one that has done this in my life. Man, I want to express myself to you because, man, I know that that paycheck doesn't come from me. It's not just my talents or my ability. God, is all from you. You're worth it. Amen. We exalt Jesus greater, with greater worth in this moment that the lady in her gift, Mary in her gift, she was exalting Jesus greater than the worth of the monetary value of this world. She, Jesus, you're, you're greater, you're better, you're above any monetary value of this world. Man, do we give in that manner? Giving is worship. That's why, I, oh man, when we, yeah, we offering to God is worship. Man, you're worth my, hey, you're worth my faith, you're worth my saving, you're worth it, God. morning to talk about the, our expressions of worship is to say that you would get that he is worthy of our praise and our adoration. He's worthy of our time. He's worthy of our pay. He's worthy of our affection and our attention. He's worthy. He's a, he's a better keeper of our family than we could ever be. He, he's a better peacemaker bringing peace to the whole world through salvation through His Son. He, he's a better peacemaker than we could ever be. He, he's worthy of worship. He's worthy of our attention, our affection. He's worthy of that. He's a better lover than any man or any woman could ever be. Amen. 
And He accepts us, and He loved us, and He took us while we were worth nothing. And He said, I will establish you as a king and a priest. I will establish you with an inheritance. I will take you from my place. I will make you that were slaves, and I'll make you free. Uh, he's a better lover than anything anybody can ever He's more affectionate. He's more attention to the details. He hears every cry. He knows every morning. The morning. He knows every emotion. He, he's better. He, he's a better rest than any rest that we could take than ourselves. And uh, I would have loved to spend an afternoon yesterday napping. It would have been great. But you know what? God had a, a it was worth my time. It was worth my affection. Went out in the morning. I went to the garden. I got to meet Mary, who, who loves Jesus and loves international students. And we got to talk all about it. And God making plans and connections. And we're going to start a, a little lunch uh or a tea time with the ladies in the Sheboygan Avenue area. I mean, he was worth me going out there. Then afterwards, okay, heading to the heading to the walk and praying. And man, seeing seven people make a decision to follow Jesus. He was worth, he's worth that time. Mm -hmm. Amen. Sometimes I find myself worrying about my life and how it will go if I spend my time in such a way towards Him, if I express my worship to Him by giving away everything that I have. I, 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 sometimes I, I catch myself in, in worry and in doubt of what will happen or how it will go, but every time I do, I find out He's worth it. Yeah. It was worth it. Because in exchange for whatever I've given up to Him or whatever I've offered to Him, I get more of Him. And that's always worth it. Yes. So it was lack of expression of worship to God because we are attributing the glory of who He is to mortal human being, to earthly things, getting credit that God deserves. Our worship expressions change when we when it is revealed to us. When we have a revelation of just how worthy he is, just how great he is, just how mighty he is, just how great his character is, and what he's done for, for us, we find ourselves sitting at the feet of Jesus, wiping his feet with our hair. I don't care what other people think about the way I live and what I do and how I, because he's worth it. Romans chapter 12. Verse 1 talks about the most pure form of worship. What is the ultimate way to say, God, you're worth it. I worship you. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 says this, To offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing, this is your true and proper worship. The ultimate statement of God's worthiness. Here's my life. It's yours. Here's my priorities. They're yours. Here's my time. It's, it's yours. Here's my voice. It's yours. Here's, here's my affection. It's yours. Here's everything about me. It's yours. It's the ultimate expression of worship is here I am. It's yours. You're worth it. So whether it be Sunday morning when we're singing a song and it says how great you are, and man, I just excited. I'm, I'm shouting because he's good, right? Or, or whether it be I'm looking at my finances and saying, oh, wow, God, you're worth it. I can write this check for you. God, you're worth it. Whether it be, man, I see somebody uh, walking and, and they need some help with their grocery, and I'm like, man, I can serve them because, God, you're worth it. it. All of it is an expression. My life is an expression of my worth, of, of how worthy, the quality of worth that God has in my life. Some of us need to remember how worthy He is, how great He is, how wonderful He's been, how much, how much grace, how much freedom that He's brought me. Amen. He is my life, it's yours, my talents, my voice, my body, my vacation, my rest, everything, my parenting, my kids, my family, my time, it's all for you. To know and have an assurance that as I worship him, the enemy would love to come in just like Judah say, you know, that wasn't the best expression of your worship. 
Well, we could have cared for the poor. No, the, in the in the face of opposition, right? The face of looking audacious, the, the, the in the moment of looking crazy for Jesus. I love I love uh, part of the reason I'm loving because no pastor. He's like, man, I used to be crazy yesterday. He goes, man, I used to be drunk, but when I was drunk, I didn't care what anybody thought. I was just like crazy, acting stupid. Yeah. Who cares? Right? I just did it. He said, now for Jesus, I don't care what people think. I'm just gonna act crazy, be stupid for Jesus. <laughs> Okay. Amen. I'm expressing how worth it Jesus is. I also felt a little warning as I was saying we were looking at scripture and studying about worship, and I came across this passage again in Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13. And this maybe has changed how I um, wanted to present these messages in this series. Because you know what? I could teach you guys how to clap on beat. I, I've learned that. I think, I, I think I, I've think i gotten a game night talent. Or, or you know, I, 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 we, could, we could teach you guys how to shout a little bit. You know, practice. We, we practiced this morning, right? We, we, can, we can do that. We can teach you, okay, this is, how you, this is how you raise your hand. And when you raise your hand, is a sign of surrender. And so you should, you know, when we're worshiping and I'm raising my hand, I'm saying, God, you're worthy. I surrender to you. Yeah, God, you're worth it. Yeah, I could, I could talk to you guys all about expressing Worship to God. Isaiah 29, 13 gives us a warning about that. Because worship comes from the heart. It comes from within. It comes from our knower. It comes from being convinced He's worthy. Anything, any worship short of that truth is empty worship. Isaiah 29, 13 says, As people come near to me with their mouth, and they honor me with their lips. Remember, worship is about honor and respect and giving God what he deserves. So they come near to me and they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship is based on merely human rules they have been taught. And I was reading through that again this week, and I was like, I don't want to just teach on worship expression, how we raise our hands, how we clap, how we shout, how we get excited for Jesus. Amen. But if I could do anything this morning, if anything that would that would help us move us towards a, a worship expression, if I could do anything, it would it would be convey and to convince you that He's worthy of it. That because of what He's done on the cross and delivering us from our sin and delivering us from the penalty of sin and, and setting us free from that, that. What he's done to make us his child, what he's done to give us an inheritance and a hope and a future, what, he, what he's done to bring peace and restoration and making all things right in our life, what he's done in those ways makes him worthy. Mm -hmm. Makes him worthy to be, as we've talked about the last two weeks, the object of our worship. The story of who God is and what he's done in the Bible that was so beautifully, poetically spoken last week. Makes him worth it. Mm -hmm. We could teach to sing and dance and clap and shout and bow. But all those would be an outward change. What we need is an inward revelation. Yes. God, you're worth all the expressions of worship I can give. Inward, our heart celebrates who he is and what he's done, that he is worthy. This morning I thought about how we should close and, and, and respond to this. The first point I always think about is the fact that we need a come to Jesus moment. Jesus is worthy of living our life for him. Good news about who Jesus is and what he's done is that he he came to, to set us free, to, to deliver us from a penalty of sin that we owe. The Bible teaches in, throughout, throughout the whole Bible that there, there is a penalty, there's a falling short of who God is. That each one of us have to come to grips with. The reality of, I fall short of what God wants me to be. And there's a penalty, the penalty, the word of God said, is death. 
what we get so excited about. And what I, I hope this morning that you would realize is that there is a Savior. His name is Jesus. There is one who has come to take your place, to take the penalty, and to give you life. The life that he lived is for us. It, the, the life that he lived, he raised, not only took the penalty, he died, he, he took our place, but also he rose again, he conquered it. And in that same way, we can have life. We can put our faith in the work that he's done and receive this salvation. Receive this, the word salvation means restoration. Being restored, being made right with God. The penalty being erased. So this morning, I want to give us an opportunity to respond to that. Say, God, yes, you're worthy. Yes, God, I want to receive the forgiveness you provided through Jesus. I want to live my life according to your ways and your will. This morning, I want to invite us to bow our heads have a moment of prayer. Maybe you're in the room and you said, you know what, Andrew, I have never made a decision to follow Jesus, to receive his full forgiveness. I have not yet submitted to Jesus being the Lord, being the leader, being the boss of my life. And today, I'm ready to make that I'm ready because I'm realizing, Andrew, he, he's worth it. That I can be forgiven. And he's worth it that I would live for him. But that's it this morning. You say, you know what, Andrew, I want to make that decision. I, for the first time, or maybe he said, you know what, I need to re-make that commitment to him. I just want to invite you to raise your hand at this moment. Say, yes, Andrew, I want to make the decision to follow Jesus with my whole life. To be forgiven, become a child of God. That's you. Go ahead and raise your hand this morning. Let's pray together. I believe uh, when we pray a prayer like this, not the words that are magically uh, make us a follower of Jesus. It's our heart that gives an expression of our heart that says, yes, God, forgive me. Yes, God, make me right. Yes, I commit my life fully to you, Jesus. Right now, I'm going to pray a prayer. and I want you to repeat after me. When I pray the prayer, it's not the words exactly that make this whole thing a, a reality. It's the heart to say, yes, God, I'm living for you. Yes, it's all for you. So would you pray with me this morning? Dear Jesus, thank you for taking my place. For receiving the penalty that I deserved. Today I recognize that I deserve death. But Jesus, you took that penalty and gave me life. Forgive me for the ways that I've fallen short of who you are. Today I commit to follow you. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Be the boss of my life <coughs> and help me from this day forward to follow you all the days of my life that I would live a life that expresses how worthy you are in Jesus name I pray amen amen I believe in this moment when we can